Hi there, welcome to Shiloh Tabernacle London. We're located in South East London in Woolwich Dockyard, Block 1, Unit 9, Dockyard Industrial Estate, Woolwich Church Street, SC18 5PQ. Join us for our Bible study every Friday from 7.30 to 9pm and you can't miss our Sunday services packed with prayer, vibrant worship and a powerful word. First service is 9am to 10.30 followed by our family service from 10.30 to 12.30. And now for the best part, let's get into the word. Last week for those of you who are not here in the morning service, I, 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 I started teaching about who we, whose we are. This year we need to know whose we are, number one. We need to know who we are, number two. And we need to know what we are meant to do. Like Pastor uh, Apostle Jesus was sharing the morning. We need to be men and women who know the seasons. The understanding of the times. Hallelujah. Last week we established that we belong to God. Whose are you? When you ask me who, who in, in the physical world, I will tell you who, who, who's I, whom I belong to in the physical world. My father. Hallelujah. Some of us, our fathers have gone, have gone to be with the Lord, but still we know you by that name. So, son of so and so, daughter of so and so. There are some people who cannot escape it. My, my wife is one of the people who cannot escape that. Wherever she goes, they will just say, hey, daughter of so and so. That's her identity in the world. But her identity does not come from him. Her identity comes from God. Hallelujah. So we, we found out that we, we belong to God. And when we belong to God, we, we have got many, many, many uh, 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 privileges that come from him. If you, if you accosted Prince Charles, you know, he, knew, he knows where, he knows who he is. He knows who he is. And he enjoys certain privileges that you and I do not, priv uh, you know, are not privy to. Because he's royal. He's royal according to this world. But listen, Jesus Christ came to make you royal as well. Hallelujah. That's what he says in, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. He says, but you are a chosen generation. You are chosen. Somebody say, I i am chosen. You are chosen. Hallelujah. You are chosen. That's why you are saved. That's why you are alive. That's why you are here. You have been chosen. You have been handpicked by God. A royal generation. A royal priesthood. Sorry, I'm just mixing the, the, the scriptures there. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. You are special to God. That you, why? That you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. You cannot know yourself if you do not know your father. You cannot know yourself if you don't know if you do not know your heavenly father. When you look into your heavenly father, you begin to see you. How do I know that? From Genesis chapter 2, he said, Let us do what? Make create man in our own image. You are an express image of God. And that's what the devil wants to destroy. Everything he's up to is to destroy that image. That's what he did in Genesis chapter 3. He shattered that image. Throw a stone. Get, go, go, if you want to know this, go home today and get hold of the mirror, of your mirror. You know, that mirror that you like. Hmm? The, mirror that you, the, the mirror in which you spend hours. Hit it hard. What will happen to that mirror? It will shatter. And this time when you stand <laughs> in front of the mirror, what will you see? You will see a distorted you. That is what happened in Genesis chapter the enemy came and shattered. He came and shattered the glass. He came and shattered the glass. And our image was distorted. But thank God for Jesus. At Calvary, he reinstated that image. And that's where we get that portion of scripture. But you are chosen. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. His own special people. Hallelujah. Somebody once said, I found myself in finding God. In finding God, that's where we find ourselves. What I was searching for was my own identity. 
And without knowing it, my search was for God. <laughs> Just think about that. Today I want to talk about personal identity. You need to know who you are. Hallelujah. This year, 2019, 2020, we've got to go into 2020 knowing who we are. There are many things that we left on the plate. 2019, Pastor Godfrey. There are many things we left on the plate that belong to us. But on this occasion, we are, we, we are discovering ourselves and we are going back. We're gonna, somebody say, I'm, I'm, I'm going back to collect. <laughs> you're going to collect. I'm not saying you're going back into 2019 physically, but we are going spiritually to collect what belongs to us. Hallelujah. Quickly as we go into scripture, there are many men in the, in the Bible who discovered their identity. And after discovering their identity, they acted differently. Hallelujah. Open, open with me in Hebrews chapter uh, 12, 11, verse 23. And by faith. We are talking about Moses. How many, how many of us know Moses? You have read about Moses. By faith, Moses, when he was born, he was hidden three months by his parents. When the king wanted to kill all the kids. Why? Because they saw he was a beautiful child. You need, as parents here, you need to see your children as beautiful children. How many parents do we have here? But when you look at your child and you begin to, to say silly words, look at her, look at it, look at it. You look, you look, you look like a, cro a crocodile. Come on, your child is beautiful. You need to protect your, your children. It doesn't, listen, it doesn't matter what they are doing. They are still your child. Take a good look at you. Hmm. You think you are holy in the presence of your most of father? No, but he still loves you. He still loves you. If he, ha if he had to send his son again, he would do it. But he can't because his son did it once and for all. He died for those who even who are not yet born. That's how, that's how powerful that love is. They saw that their child was beautiful and they purposed to shield them. Purpose to shield your children from the, the, from, from the impending disasters, from the things that are going on around. Purpose to shield them in prayer. Shield your children. They built this basket and they put him on water. They had nothing to do. They put him on water. We are talk, we're not talking about the river Thames. We are talking about the river Nile. Many crocodiles in that river. Many, but the child survived them because there was a purpose of God on him and because his mother dared to risk her life and protect him. Mothers, risk your lives for your children. Risk your lives for your children. Protect them. Go an extra mile. That child that God gave you is beautiful. Stop comparing your children with other people's children. Your child is beautiful. Hallelujah. Protect them. This woman, Moses' mother, is a peculiar woman. She defied the king. If the king had landed on her, she would be dead. But she defied the king and said, I'm going to protect this child. Somehow, he will survive. She had faith. By faith, Moses, when he was born, it was by faith. Moses did not have faith. He was a baby. The faith we are talking about was his mother's faith. Mothers, do you have faith? Parents, do you have faith? Have faith that that child will change. Have faith that that child will sail along the troubled waters and river and uh, crocodile infested rivers of, of the world that they will never, and they, will, they will learn somewhere. They must learn somewhere. They must. They better. Better. Your child is beautiful. Your daughter is beautiful. Your son is beautiful. The teachers may be saying otherwise. The world may be saying otherwise. But your child is beautiful. The doctors may say otherwise. But your child is beautiful. Protect them by faith. The parents were not afraid of the king's command. There are some silly commands. If you see, you, know, you need to see the destiny in your child. This woman saw destiny in Moses. That's why you can talk about Moses right now. There are many mothers who lost their children then because they did not. They said, oh, the king has said, oh. They, get, they even gave them to the king. This one, no, not, not with this one. 
just proceed because we don't have time. Verse 24. <laughs> now, in, the first, in, the, in verse 23, whose faith was it? Mother's faith. But in verse 24 now, it is whose faith? Moses' faith. So when she was when she put him on the river on, on the Nile River, we know that he was picked up by Pharaoh's daughter. Somebody will pick up your child. Somebody, somebody, God has or had ordained. Can you imagine the person who is wanting to kill them, to kill the children, and the Lord is using his daughter to come and rescue. Oh, you have rescued my life. Ah. She ordained. God ordained her to pick up this boy and take him in as her own. Then she became Pharaoh's son. The son of Pharaoh's daughter. Now let's go back. Verse 24. By faith, when Moses became of age, hmm? when he became of age, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Why? Because he discovered who he was. Let's go to verse 25. He refused choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. Than to enjoy the passing pleasures. The passing pleasures. The passing pleasures. He chose. Listen. M Moses was in line for the throne. He could have gotten the throne. But he juxtaposed the throne and who he really is. He said, no, I have got to walk out of this. There are some things, my friend, this year that you are going to refuse. There are things you are going to refuse. You are going to refuse them and say, this is not my portion. I'm not going to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. To enjoy these ones will be tantamount to killing me. His identity. He knew he's a Hebrew. He's not an Egyptian. My friend. You are not them. You may walk with them. You may work with them. You may love with them. You may study with them. But you are not them. I am of this. I am in this world. But I am not of the world. You need to know who you are. If you do not know who you are. Somebody else will define you. Your boss will define you. Let me tell you. Your job does not define you. You are not defined by your job. As a matter of fact, some of us are doing jobs which we are not supposed to do. And we, and we, and we are comfortable. This business of identity is a serious one. You've got to take a step and refuse some things. Get out of them. Step out. It doesn't matter. This guy was enjoying, he was eating at the tables, at the king's table. But he looked at his fellow Hebrews who were suffering. He chose to be a slave than continue being a royal in that Egyptian palace. What is that that you are clinging to that you need to release and walk away from? <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me continue. I'm giving, I'm giving these verses. You can go back home and read them deeper. We're going to go into 1 Samuel chapter 17. That was Moses. I'm just speaking to a few people because I cannot give you everything on uh, Sunday morning. That's why you need to keep coming out on, on Fridays. By the way, Friday, we have, we have taken back the Bible studies to Friday. Friday, Bible study, Friday. Friday we are here. We studied the Bible. Some of us continue until the morning. If you want, if you are there and you are tired of some situation, you say, I want to be in the presence of the Lord. Come here. You don't have to pray the whole night. Pray three hours. Pray two hours. Pray five hours. Go home. Saturday we are here. We have, there, are some, there are some wells we need to dig. <laughs> I don't know about you. So I can't give you everything on a Sunday morning. This is just... You know, take away. How, how can you live on take away? How dare you live on take away? If you are in this place and you're living on take away in the physical, I have, I'm coming for you. You need to, to, to take time and prepare food, proper food. 
So when we come out on, on Friday nights, we are sitting for proper food. We want to eat. Somebody said amen. What scripture did I say? First Samuel 17. What's happening in that scripture? It's Bible scholars. Hmm? David is going to kill Goliath. <clears throat> we know the story. The Philistines are on the other side of the, of, of, the, of the mountain. The Israelites are on this side of the mountain. Hallelujah. And what's happening? This, David, his father Jesse sends him to the field to take food for his brothers. Poor boy. Young boy. He is a shepherd in the fields. As a matter of fact, he's just on an errand. He's not there to fight, but he's there to take food for his brothers at the, at the battlefront. And whilst he's there, we know that, 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 that Goliath used to come every morning and taunt the, the, the armies of God. Every morning. Every morning. And as per chance, as this boy is, has just landed into this war camp, he hears the guy. The guy comes. Which verse are we looking for? Let's go to verse 20. So David rose early in the morning, left the sheep with the keeper, and took the things and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the camp as the army was going out to fight and, sh and shouting for battle. For Israel and the Philistines had drawn up battle in array. Army against army. Verse 23. 22. And David left his supplies. He left his supplies at the hand of the, of the supply keeper. He ran to the army and came to greet his brothers. He was insane. He wanted to meet his brothers. He hadn't seen them for a while. Then as he talked with them, there was this champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, coming up from the armies of the Philistines. And he spoke according to the same words. Which words? He had been speaking these words to the, to, to the army. Then as he talked with them, there was the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, coming up from the armies of the Philistines, and he spoke according to the same words. So David heard them. David, they, they, these words entered into this little boy's ears. So the men of Israel said, have you seen this man? They were in tribulation. Who has come up? Surely he has come up to, to defy Israel. And it shall be that the man who kills the king, him. The king will enrich with riches, will give him his daughter and give his father's house exemption from all taxes in Israel. All this entered David's mind. David said, what? You mean there is a reward to kill this guy? He said, <laughs> he enlisted himself. He said, I am in now. This one, <laughs> a little boy. Verse 26, then David spoke to the men who stood by him. He heard it, but he had to confirm it. So he, he drew near and said, what did you say, guys? Did I, did, I hear, did, I, did I hear you say something? What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? This is a young boy. He's talking to generals who are, who are on, the, on, the, on, the, on the battlefield. Verse 27. And the people answered him in this manner, saying, So shall it be done for the man who kills him. Now! As he was speaking to them, his, his brother, elder brother, Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men. And Eliab's anger was aroused against David. And he said, why did you come down here? Why are you here? Don't you see, this is, this is, a, this is a club of, for men. What are you doing here, you little boy? And he takes Stephen father. And with whom have you left those few sheep? It turns out that David, Pastor David was not a pastor of a mega church. He had just a few sheep. A few. Look at you. Even the sheep that, even the sheep that, 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 that you pastor, they're just, they're just a few. And you are here in this battle of battles. You need to know yourself. David knew who he was. I may be a small boy who spends my day at the back in the backside of the desert looking after a few sheep, but I know who I am. I know who I am. Eliab, I am not threatened by you. You cannot be, you cannot afford to be threatened by Eliabs. There are Eliabs out there who will try to pull you down. You need to know who you are. They will measure you by what you have don't even have a car you don't even have a house you don't you're not even married some of them will tell you, you're not even married <laughs> you have no papers 
and you are here, you need to know who you are. Listen, what was at stake? There was a wife, daughters, the king's daughter. There was money. There was no paying tax. Can you imagine no paying taxes in the UK forever? Some of you open your bank, you, you, you pay slips and look at it and you, and you, and, and you faint. It takes about, you about three hours for you to recover. From what the taxman has taken. You, you say, what? And with whom have you left the few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride. It is not pride. A people who know themselves. I think it was uh, uh, my, my son who was preaching about ego last week. Ego is not bad. But if you take it to the, to, to the zenith, that's when it becomes bad. You need to know who you are. You enter this office and know who you are. Forget about this. This, this is nothing. This is inconsequential to people who know themselves. You enter into this place and you know who you are. The little David, yeah, you are black. You are from Africa. Yes, but I have got there's somebody that's in me that is bigger than you. Hallelujah. <laughs> I know your pride and your insolence, the insolence of your heart. And for you have come down to see the battle. You have come down to see the battle. David is not at this place to see the battle, my friend. He's not asking this question just to see. I don't know about, but I feel like fighting. I feel like fighting. My God. Not you, <laughs> the devil. And David said, what have I done now? Is there, is, is, is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause that I should ask this question? You guys have been, how long have you been here? You know, there are some things that you are about to solve that people, greater people than you have failed to solve for ages. You are about to solve them the moment you discover who you really are. Is there not a cause? You have been at this at this front for many, many days, just marking time, just marking time. And shouldn't I ask what will happen to a man that will take out that? The giant must fall. Then he turned to another one because he wanted to make sure to make sure that these guys know what they are talking about, and began to ask the same question. And these people answered, that's the first one. You need to do research. Ask around and make sure that that is what it is <laughs> before you dive in. Just quickly go. Verse 31. Now, when the words which David spoke were heard, they reported him to Saul. Them to Saul. And he sent for him. Because he was, there are people who are looking for possibility thinkers. Every leader is always looking for a possibility thinker. Somebody will say, this, this, this can be sorted. That even the president will call you. The king called this. Can you imagine this young boy? A shepherd. Smelling of dung. Sheep is smelling. I don't even know whether he has anything, any, anything in his feet, but he's being called to the, to, in the presence of the king. Come. See what, listen, what happened. Then verse 20, 32. Then David said to, to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. <laughs> let no man's heart fail because of who? Of Goliath. Your servant <laughs> will go and fight with this Philistine. What? The, the, he must have sized him up. You know, people will size you up. And David said, to him, and Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this guy. You are not able. People will tell you you are not able. Situations will tell you you are not able. Your education will tell you you are not able. Your background will tell you you are not able. They will size you and tell you what you are able to do and what you are not able to do. Who knows what you are able to do better than you? <laughs> listen. 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 Why can't you, are you not able to get him? Because you are a youth. You are inexperienced. And this man, you are a youth. And this man that you want to fight has been fighting since he was a youth. You, see, you get those extremes. 
One is a youth, another one started fighting at his age. How dare you? That's what, that's what I said. There are things that you're about to, somebody in this place is about to solve stuff. That things, people older than you, older than you, they started doing them when you were still in Pampas. But right now you're about to give them the solution because you know who you are. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody say amen. But David said to Saul, your servant used to kill. This man, yes, I understand he's a, he's a fighter. But even me, no, he, he pulled out his CV. Yeah. Pull out your CV. There are things that you think that are inconsequential. Pull them out. Even, that, even when you are looking for a job, pull, put, there, put some stuff on that CV that you think are just stupid. But they are powerful. He pulls out his what? His CV. Your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took the lamb out of the flock, I went out after him and struck it and delivered it from, the, from, from its mouth. And when it came around, and when it ro- arose against me, I caught it by its beard. Talking about a lion. And struck it and killed it. What? Your servant has killed both lion and bear. Let me tell you, the person sat in your chair has killed some stuff. There are some things that you have, you have conquered in the spirit world. There are things that you have conquered in the physical world. You are more, that's, that's why Paul says you are more than a conqueror, my friend. Pull out your CV, there are things that you have conquered. And that's why you are still here. So when he said that, he said, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. I will add him to my, to my CV. That's a seven. Moreover, David said, <clears throat> this is interesting. The Lord, capitalized Lord, Yahweh, the great I am. That's why I said last week, you need to know who's you, whose you are. Once you know whose you are, you will know yourself. He knew whose he was. The Lord who delivered me from the power of the, the power of, of the lion and the power of the bear. He will deliver me from, from the hand of this Philistine. And David, when, when Saul heard, he said, you know, go and the Lord be with you. Let Yahweh be with you. But then something happened. The next verse, that's what, what I want. So Saul clothed David with his armor and he put on a bronze helmet on his head. He also clothed him with a coat of mail. Mm-hmm. David fastened his sword to his armor and tried to walk, for he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, You know what? This is not me. This is not me. This is not my identity. Mm-mm. I cannot walk with these things, for I have not tested them. So David took them off. <laughs> then he took, he went to, the, to his own identity, to the man that he is used to being. He took his staff in his hand and he chose for himself. Nobody chose for himself. He knew which stones he wanted. He chose the five smooth stones from the brook. He went to the brook, this young man, and he, he selected, there were many stones, he selected them and put them in the shepherd's bag, in the pouch in which he, which he had. And it, with his sling in his hand and then he advanced he put he refused to put on the armor of Saul listen you your success is not predicated on somebody else's tools <laughs> somebody else's tools will not work for you you need to know your tools what works for you? What has worked for you? Use it to not belittle it. If it was somebody else, you would say, look at the stones. He would say, what is, what is the sling before this man? But it is what he knew, who he really was, that took out this Philistine. Somebody say amen. There are some armors you need to refuse. There are some clothes you need to refuse. There are some names you need to refuse. There are some tools you need to refuse. Find your own tools you cannot succeed on another man's God you need to know your Lord, he knew his Lord (laughs) my Lord, he is our God but my Lord may be different from you the way he comes through for me 
You understand? So it's not copy and paste. As I finish, let me draw you to another man. Daniel. Daniel. Can we go to Daniel? Give me to me about five minutes. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Daniel, we have talked, we have talked about Moses, we have talked about who? David. Now there's this young called this young man called Daniel. What a spectacular man he was. Are you there? Daniel chapter one. Where is my Daniel? Are you Lord God Almighty? Play the song, David. What is the Lord? As we look for that. What is the Lord? You are holy. Holy. Are you Lord God Almighty? Aha. Uh -huh. Daniel chapter 1. You're not going to read the whole of it, but you're going to get a few stuff from it. In that third year, King Nebuchadnezzar, hmm? King, King, King Nebuchadnezzar came, the king of Egypt, of uh, Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave. <laughs> Just look at that word. The Lord did what? Gave. Joachim, king of Judah, into his hand. It is not the prowess of Nebuchadnezzar that took over this Judah. It's the Lord who gave. Listen, no demon has power over you unless God allows it. And whenever he allows it, it's for a purpose. Just like he allowed it in, in Job's life. In this instance, he allowed it because the house of Judah had been rebellious to the Lord. So he wanted to teach them a lesson. So what did they do? They went in there and he bought, brought the articles into the treasure house of his God. He, mm -hmm. Then the king instructed Ashpenes, the master of the eunuchs, to bring some of the children of Israel and some of the king's descendants and some of the nobles. Young men. He was looking for what? Young men. Young men. In those, in those days, when we talk about young men, young men, I think... It's about maybe 14, for between 14 and 15. Number one, they were young men. Number two, they, they, they had to have no blemish on them. Good looking, handsome. Gifted in all, not some, wisdom. Possessing knowledge and quick to understand. Who had ability to serve in the king's palace. And whom they may teach the language and the literature of the Chaldeans. I was looking for teachable young people. That's why we need to pray for young people in this place. Young people in this place, the devil is looking for our young people, but we guard them in the presence of the Most High God. Hallelujah. They are guarded. Our children are guarded. Our children are guarded. Listen. And the king appointed for them daily provisions of the king's delicacies. These boys were taken, we are, we are handpicked. Wisdom talented, handsome. And as if that's not enough, they are taken to begin to eat the food that's direct from the king's table. Royal privileges. <laughs> you can imagine if they said from today onwards you will be, will be serving you with the food that the, the queen eats. What she eats is what we drive to your place. <laughs> some, of us would, some of us would say, you know, bye-bye, Lito. Bye-bye. I am bye-bye, I am Tesco. I am now a royal. Can you imagine? I eat from the... You, 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 would, you would publicize it. You would Facebook it. You would Instagram it. You would everything it. Just so that people may know that you are eating from the royal table. The delicacies of the wine which he drank. And he had to be trained. Three years of training. It's no wonder why degrees, if somebody takes a, a, a bachelor of science, a bachelor of whatever it is, it takes three years. It three, takes three years for somebody to master something. Three good years. They were training them, these young men. Decanting everything that they knew as, since they were born and trying to, to, to implant some stuff in them, the Chaldean's language. There are a lot of, there are a lot of ideologies floating around. But if you do not know who you are, not everything that is delicacy is supposed to be eaten. Just because it is from the king's table, just because it is the trend, it's not meant to be eaten. Verse 6. 
Now, among those of, of the sons of Judah, among those of the sons of Judah were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. That means there were many, many, many young men that were taken. But among them are these ones. And the chief of the eunuchs gave them names. He gave Daniel the name Bel 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 Belshazzar. To Hananiah, he gave him Shadrach. To Mishael, he gave him Meshach. And to Azariah, a bed nego. They even gave them names. Things will name you. Things will name you. Poverty. That one is sickness. That one is depression. That one is cancer. All those stupid names. We refuse them. If you know who you are, you cannot take them on. You refuse them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But Daniel, but Daniel, but Daniel, but, 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 but Reuben, but, 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 but your name there, purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies. Number one, these are Hebrew boys. In, among the king's delicacies could have been pork. They don't eat pork. Maybe when they were killed, the, dry, the, the blood was not drained properly. He doesn't know where it is coming from. He does not know. You cannot just consume what you don't know where it's coming from. He refused and said, you know what? He refused. He refused because he knew who he was. He said, I will not eat from that king's table because I don't know where that food is coming from. Maybe it has been offered to, idol, to, 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 to idols because you know that what they used to do that in the old days. And this is what he requested. He requested that the chief, you know, hmm? Change his diet. Him and his friends. He gives them vegetables and water. Today, when somebody, when you tell your kids to eat vegetables, it's like a punishment. And he said, listen, after 10 days, I want you to compare. Ask with those guys who have been eating what? The king's delicacies. And you will tell me. These guys ate vegetables. No wonder vegetables, when you talk to every nutritionist, they will take you, they will tell you, go eat vegetables. Green, green. David was, Daniel was very wise. He knew all these things. After 10 days, the Bible says that when they were compared, these guys were more fatter. These guys were more smarter. And God, because they refused to defile themselves, because they knew who they were and refused to entertain the delicacies of the king, God gave them enough knowledge, more than enough knowledge in everything. Know who you are. Dare to be a Daniel. Dare to be a Moses. Dare to be a David. And God will take you to another level. Hallelujah. You cannot settle for less if you know who you are. You cannot settle for anything that is sweet. Anything that is good. It may look good on the outside, but on the inside, it has got something else. It's not for you. Not every trend is for you. Hallelujah. Not every trend is for you. It may look good, but no, 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 no. Know who you are. Number two, never use other people's trade, tools of trade or woo. You will not use another's anointing to succeed. You need your own anointing. Number three, do not defile yourself. People who know themselves cannot defile themselves. If you know yourself, you will excel in being who you are. There is no other person like you. There is no other person like you. There is no other Reuben you can search. I have searched through all eternity. You will never search another. You will never find another Reuben. <laughs> But the truth is that there's no other person like you. You need to be you. You need to be good at you. Being true to you. And when you're true to you, you're also true to the one who created you. Then you will become the tool that God created. You know when he, cre he created you for a purpose. So when we, when, we, when we start living other people's lives, then we are, we, it's like, you know, we are belittling God who created us. Some of us want you, you look at the other name and say, I wish I was born in the other family. No. I wish I was born in, 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 in Japan. Oh, in America. No. You had to be born in Africa because there's a purpose why you were created that way. Know who you are. Thank you so much for listening to this sermon. And I know you've been blessed. For more information about Shiloh Tabernacle and other sermons, please visit our website, www.shiloh.org.uk. And don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms. Instagram, Twitter and Facebook at Shiloh LDN. Once again, that's at Shiloh LDN. 
You've been listening to Shiloh Tabernacle London, changing lives, building dreams. Until next time.